Today, we want to discuss the question, what is automotive ethernet? Hi, my name is Lars and I'm working as a technical fellow at Technical Engineering. I have more than 11 years of experience in automotive ethernet and maybe you have read one of the standards I wrote, like some IP, where I was the main author. If you have maybe a question yourself, you can put that in the comments and if you subscribe, you will see then what our answer to your question is. So let's go back to our question, what is automotive ethernet? Before we go into that, we want to see what are the use cases. And the typical use cases for automotive ethernet started many, many years ago. But to be exact, 2008 was the first SLP of an OEM in which we saw the flash update over ethernet. So our use case number one is software update in a car using ethernet. And what happened there is basically you could connect uh, the tester of the shop to the car and software update the whole uh, software in the car. Before that, uh, there was CAN being used for that, and CAN is really slow, with half a megabit or a megabit for flash update. And you can imagine, you brought your car to the shop and you had to wait like two days until the flash update was through and everything was ready. If something went wrong, maybe three days. You didn't want that and the shop didn't want that either. So Ethernet was a really good idea. And since 2008, people are flashing, updating the cars with Ethernet. Use case number two, advanced driver assistance and autonomous driving. Those technologies, you often see big data sensors like radar, LiDAR, or image sensors. Those all transport a lot of data over the network and they all can use Ethernet in order to avoid proprietary technologies. If you think about that, you could also have data between ECUs, electronic control units being transported. So maybe you have two computers to calculating for advanced driver assistance or maybe actually for autonomous driving and they can send data back and forth using Ethernet and with this high speed Ethernet can offer, that's a really cool solution. Use case number three, infotainment. Infotainment is not only navigation and audio in the car, but there are also other applications. You can transport video over a system and show video like a DVD image, the rear view camera, a surround view or something else. You can also stream audio inside the car, into the car from the outside. So internet data can go into the car. You can have certain applications using internet data in the car. So that's a typical infotainment use cases. What's cool about Ethernet and infotainment is that it's a converged medium. You can run audio on it, you can run video on it, you can run data on it, like control data. You can run uh, internet data over it, diagnostics, flash update data, and so on and so on. So one medium to transport everything. So with those three use cases, let's see if we can answer the question. The first of all, we will look into the Phi technology, that physical layer part of Ethernet. And for the second uh, answer, we will look at the overall technology stack. People use the name automotive ethernet a little bit different. So variant number one, automotive ethernet concerning the physical layer. So what is a physical layer? Physical layer makes sure that you transport data over your medium. That could be a cable, that could be fiber optics, that could be even radio waves. On ethernet, we basically have different requirements in the car that are a little bit different than what you have in the enterprise or what you have in your home, for instance, for Ethernet. For example, if you start up an Ethernet gigabit Ethernet link at home, it can take one to three seconds until the link is ready to transport data. That is not good for a car, right? If you have something inside the car, you want that application to be available faster. Just think about that. You open your car, unlock it, and it takes five seconds to open the door or starting the engine or displaying the rear view camera on your display. That's not good for the car. So you want to make it faster and typical use cases say like below 200 milliseconds uh, link startup time would be really cool. So that's a big uh, requirements difference we see. But there are others. If you look at the connectors for instance in the enterprise for cables we see typically the RJ45 connector and we have a small figure for you to look at that. With that RJ45 connector you have eight pins of that so we have four twisted pairs of wire in there and those have some problems in automotive because the automotive industry, you know, a vehicle is moving. So vibration and mechanical movement is an issue. And with that, of course, the connector has to somehow be stable in that environment. If it moves too much, the connector might lose the connectivity. So that would be a problem. So vibration, not so good with the regular connectors. The next thing would be humidity. If water gets into the connector system or the cable, you might get into trouble as well. So you want to avoid that as well. And here, there are some solutions out there. Overall, 
If you really want to make it automotive capable, you also need to change the connectors and probably the cables as well. Talking about the cables, in the regular Gigabit line, what you see here is a four twisted pair, so it's eight wires. You have a shielding and then you have like a, a plastic shield, uh, sheath around it. And that is kind of thick compared to what um, technologies for CAN or Flex Render Car are doing because they use a single twisted pair and the thickness of course leads to a certain thickness of the cable harness and you can imagine that in the car there's not enough space for putting the cables everywhere so you want a cable that's not too thick and probably not too heavy because you want everything to be lightweight as well. Another difference between automotive ethernet and your regular ethernet at home is electromagnetic compatibility. In the car, it could happen that you run a, like a link on ethernet and that link, would, uh, um, the radiation is emitting, could for instance cause some static on your radio. You don't want that. For that reason, in the typical car scenario, you have harder requirements on electromagnetic compatibility. So that's something as well we have to take account into ethernet and automotive ethernet has to follow those standards as well. So overall, there's kind of different requirements here and we need to have different requirements on the automotive ethernet. So let's now look with that know-how to our three use cases and see what that means for it. On use case number one, the software update in the car. We don't have those hard requirements really because the car is not moving, it's standing still in the shop. So if there's the radio perception is not perfect, probably nobody will care. So here we could use the regular standard 100 base TX uh, ethernet that's the same thing you have in your notebook or your desktop PC if it goes for 100 megabit. That's where Ethernet in the car started. And since that can only be used for certain use cases like the software update, but not for the driver assistance or the autonomous driving, I would not call that automotive Ethernet per se. It's Ethernet in the car, but it's not really that automotive Ethernet quite yet. Use case number two, driver assistance and autonomous driving. Here the technology has to work while the car is moving. Here the technology has to work all the time. Here we have to fulfill all the requirements we discussed before. If it's startup time, if it's uh, EMC, if it's weight, if it's connectors and so on. Everything has to work. And now we see a difference here. And a difference has to be that the fire is capable of that. So what happens here, special physical layer transceivers had to be created. So the physical layer had to be created. For automotive ethernet, we see the 100 base T1 standard. It was first in cars 2013 and it basically is a physical layer that can transport 100 megabit in both directions at the same time over an automotive uh, cable and connector system on a single unshielded twisted pair. So you can shield it if you want to, but you don't have to. It depends a bit on your MC requirements. Sometimes you might want to sheath the cable, so put a jacket around it to keep like the water from getting into cable, but that's up to the OEM to decide. After that, we saw in the last year's car coming to the market with faster ethernet speeds in the car. We saw gigabit on the car, so 100 megabit now gigabit, and as well the standard for 2.5, 5 and 10 gigabit per second already out there, so you can use them and they can be put on the car pretty soon. We will probably see cars with that in a few years to come. Funny enough, at the same time, while people were working on the 25 gigabit per second, which is still in standardization, the 10 megabit, not 10 gigabit, but 10 megabit, 10 base T1S standard came out. And now we can also have like a very slow 10 megabit Ethernet in the car. Not only those multi gigabit speeds for driver assistance, but you can imagine there might be use cases where a very simple 10 megabit multi trop bus like system also is attractive. So that basically defined automotive Ethernet via the FI. So the physical layer, special for us, but the automotive industry is kind of weird at times. And so one thing which is really for outsiders kind of curious that we use the name automotive ethernet not only for the physical layer or maybe the neck layer, which is ethernet as well, but everything on top of that. So if you run on top of that, um, the neck layer with VLANs, uh, you, you run um, precision time protocol for time synchronization, you run certain QoS, mechanisms like shaping, prioritization, policing, time-sensitive networking parts. You can uh, run like a TCP IP stack on top of that. You can run audio video bridging on top of that, AVB, and as well some IP, the middleware for control messages. And of course, diagnostics over IP to flash update the car you can run on top of that as well. Concerning the answer, what is automotive ethernet? Either you define it by the PHY, so the PHY technology, the chips and the standards, or, as most people in the automotive sector, we define the overall technology stack with all the protocols on top of it as automotive ethernet. I hope you found that 
answer useful. Hope to see you again in the next video.